It's now hours to the inauguration of Donald Trump as the 45th president of the United States, but it seems that there are uncertainties about the incoming administration concerning its foreign policy for Africa. Our correspondent in Washington, D.C., Ayotunde Balogu, spoke to some foreign policy experts on this issue. On January the 20th, Donald Trump becomes the next president of the United States. During his campaigns, he revealed little about his foreign policy priorities, leaving many to ask if his government will interact favorably with Africa. Former U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mrs. Robin Sanders, says that both the Republicans and Democrats agree on some key issues on Africa. Even today we have Electrify Africa, which is a bipartisan um, uh, legislation. We have a GOA. So I'm hoping that that same kind of spirit of bipartisanship to keep some of these things Ambassador continues will, into the next administration. Continue. The African Growth and Opportunity Act, a GOA, has been extended till 2025 by an agreement signed in 2015. This should help expand U.S. trade and investments in sub-Saharan Africa. And a U.S. foreign policy advisor, Jeffrey Gordon, bears his mind on the incoming government. Certainly he wants strong ties with Africa. He wants strong economic development between the United States and Africa. So economic development and strong business ties would be something to look forward to for a Trump White House. China in recent years has risen to become Africa's largest trading partner, a move many analysts may see as an economic threat. However, an advocate for Small Business Administration, Ngozi Bell, says Africa should be hopeful about Mr. Trump's government. So when we go back to our president-elect Trump, being a good businessman, if you recognize that the world is going after this continent, where 65% of the population is going to be the biggest growth population on the planet, then I assume that he's going to look at it from the perspective of the benefit to this country and how that win-win needs to be created. And I think we have to be hopeful about that. American University professor Kwaku Nwama also has some words for the African continent. If you compare what Bush did on the continent compare, uh, to speeches that Barack Obama gave, um, they don't compare. You know, look at PEFA, for example, which has saved African lives. Um, uh, programs that really put money on the continent. So my plea to Africanists is that we cannot disengage from working with the Trump administration. Political and economic observers say they will be looking to see how Donald Trump's foreign policies will better the African continent. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Ayotunde Balogun. Channels Television News. The United Nations has warned of famine risk in Somalia amid a worsening drought. An estimated 5 million Somalis are in need of food aid after sparse rain triggered drought in much of the country. In southwest states alone, nearly 820,000 people are in dire need of urgent humanitarian support. That's according to a newly released report from the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. Somalia risks slipping back into famine. The United Nations said this on Tuesday, January 17, as worsening drought has left millions of people without food, water or health care in a country crippled by decades of war. Five million Somalis, or more than four out of ten residents, do not have enough to eat because of poor rains and fighting between the Islamist militant group Al-Shabaab and Somalia's African Union-backed government. Famine last struck pockets of Somalia in 2011, killing 260,000 people. It was caused by drought, conflict and a ban on food aid in territories held by Al-Shabaab. Researchers say many indicators like those seen in 2011, such as rising food prices and falling livestock prices, have reappeared and April rains are predicted to be poor. Well, we have a very serious drought situation at the moment in, in Somalia. Uh, in fact, Five million people in this country, which is, which is more than 40% of the population, are currently in need of, of food aid because they don't have enough to eat. So uh, this is a result of, of the fourth consecutive drought season that we did not have enough rains. So it's going to take, as we know, another four months before we have another rainy season. And that's going to be a very difficult period for people like this. And we will see more and more people arriving in these kind of camps. So they need assistance to help them through this season. And then hopefully also there's going to be assistance for them 
to restart their lives and that's going to be much more difficult. This is just humanitarian aid, this is short-term aid, but in the long term these people also need to get a livelihood again. I came from Bulaia village to escape the harsh conditions there. We don't have food, water and clothes. Our farms are barren, our livestock are dead and our men cannot find any work to do. I lost my son because I could not find any food or water to give him. Now another one is also in the hospital. I lost 12 members of my family. We are in so much despair. This morning, this morning, we did not cook anything because I have nothing to feed my children. They are here crying. We urgently need food, water and medicine. The United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, UNOCHA, has launched an 864 million US dollars humanitarian response plan for Somalia in 2017 that will target an estimated 3.9 million Somalis. The plan was launched on Tuesday in the capital Mogadishu during the humanitarian response plan conference attended by government and diplomatic officials. The Somali federal government is committed to do its level best to ensure timely and coordinated response to the drought emergency. We are working closely with the humanitarian organizations and have already put in place drought response mechanisms. A national drought relief committee led by the deputy prime minister is established and will be responsible for policy setting and establishment. The crisis will be a major test for the new government in Somalia, which is in the process of electing a president. Farmers in Kenya's Rift Valley have found that less staple crops like watermelons and passion fruits bring them more money. The region provides the bulk of the country's food, but in recent years, growers have been exploring other alternatives alongside traditional crops like maize. Mark Mukopi, a farmer in Kenya's Transnzoia County, has been growing maize on his 14-acre farm for over 30 years. But last year, he decided to farm watermelons, which are growing in popularity in the region. Watermelon takes three months to mature, and is grown here only during the hot season when temperatures can go above 25 degrees centigrade because the fruit does not do well in cold climates. An acre of watermelon can fetch about $4,400 compared to an acre of maize grown over the same period which brings in about $300. The harvest is good because as we talk, irrespective, irrespective of the poor weather, because the shorter rains have not come as expected. We have had very, very little rain, unlike what we anticipated initially. So the yield has not been as good as I wanted, but for a start I am satisfied, because I have so far harvested uh, close to a ton, about, about 800 kilos. The farmer sells his melons to wholesalers at an average price of $1.50 for a watermelon weighing 6 kilograms. And that's it on Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Timmy Topwell,